as extreme the video title may sound, it could very well become a reality very soon. The upcoming graphics card generation, according to rumors, should end up being very power hungry. Which is why PC enthusiasts could soon be forced into buying more expensive and especially higher wattage power supplies. With today's Be Quiet Pure Power 11FM 1000 Watt PSU, we could at least be offered a more affordable way out of those harsh power requirements. In theory, we should still be able to expect quality here, 80 plus gold certification is also part of it, and the price at about 155 US dollars for the 1000 Watt version is still on the more attractive side of pricing when taking into consideration that comparable models by the competition go for a lot more. But even Be Quiet themselves have pricier, more premium 1000 watt models within their lineup to choose from with even higher efficiency. In this video I will be talking about what this Pure Power 11FM has to offer and whether or not you should spend a little more. Furthermore, I would also like to talk about the new standard ATX 3.0 which could soon become a reality as well. After all, it's not exactly an insignificant topic, especially not since future over the top graphics cards play a big role in it. So make sure you watch till the end. As far as what comes included, as we are used to by Be Quiet, a very complete package. Power supply, cables, screws, cable ties, and a short user manual. Right off the bat, I'd like to make it clear that I have partially had some experience dealing with the Pure Power series in the past. Those were rated at 80 plus silver back then and came with a lower rated output power. On this more recent version, Be Quiet has now upped the efficiency to a contemporary gold certification. Nonetheless, the Pure Power series is considered more as the entry or mid range series within Be Quiet's PSU lineup. So not the very best components should be expected here, since money had to be saved in a few spots, so the product could still hit the shelves at a price tag of $155. Certain technical compromises needed to be made, and what those are you'll find out a bit later into the video. Even though we're dealing with a 1000 watt unit, the dimensions are still completely standard, so the PSU will fit into most common PC cases without any issues. The build quality is totally fine, even though it's obvious that higher tier or more premium Be Quiet models offer more charm and that premium look. Obviously we are being offered full modularity here in terms of cables, so all cables are detachable, greatly assisting with cable management. For the fan they've gone with one of their own ones, a 120mm one with a rifle bearing. However, there's no semi-passive cooling going on here, something many modern PSUs offer nowadays, even though when it comes to power supplies, I personally generally much rather prefer active cooling anyway. Not all of you will share my opinion though, and that's totally fine. Still, you can rest assured that the fan is operating incredibly quietly even under higher PSU loads. The 12 volts are split up into two rails, so this is a multi-rail unit, which generally speaking is considered to be much safer than single rail designs. One of the rails offers us 46 amps to work with, the other 42. Needless to say, the Pure Power 11 FM comes with all the latest protection measures in place. And of course there are tons of power connectors at our disposal, something you'd come to expect from a 1000 watt unit. I'm talking two pieces of 8-pin CPU power connectors, six pieces of PCIe 8-pin connectors, 10 SATA, then just a mere two pieces of the good old Molex and a single floppy. I would have wished for slightly more Molex action here, but I am well aware of the fact that many will follow me with raised pitchforks for that statement I just made. The cable length is adequate, if you're asking me. It must be said that the 24 pin connector is nylon braided, whereas the remaining cables are of the type flat ribbon. In 2022, I certainly would have expected more uniformity and not such a wild mix. So I'm now ready to move on to the next step, which is opening up the unit and taking a peek at its internals. At this point I'd like to put out a clear warning that opening power supplies is very dangerous and can cost lives. So if you ever have to remove the cover, be extra cautious. 
I would also like to make it very clear that I'm neither a professional when it comes to PSUs nor electrical equipment in general. All I can do is point out the very basics. For instance, I can tell you that this is very likely a platform by the OEM going by the name of HEC, a manufacturer that isn't necessarily known for producing the best of the best units out there, but it has some great achievements under its belt too, especially for smaller budgets. The platform is kept very clean, almost entirely cableless, which is great. Anyway, on the primary side, it seems we are dealing with a half bridge topology with expected LLC converters. On the secondary side though, we see some synchronous rectification going on, SR for short, and needless to say, DC to DC conversion. Now these are things you'd simply come to expect these days at mentioned prices, in my humble opinion. It's obvious one of the first compromises needed to be made when it comes to the choice of capacitors. On the primary side, there are two 400 volt, 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitors by the Taiwanese brand Tipo. Within our community over the last decade, it's mainly Japanese capacitors that are renowned to perform really well and offer the longer lifespan. Be Quiet doesn't advertise for any Japanese caps used though. That's because they are are close to none to be found in here. Nonetheless, the quality and lifespan of Chinese and Taiwanese capacitors has improved drastically over the last few years. For instance, Be Quiet decided to go with ones by Tipo that, similar to Japanese Nippon Chemican or Nichiken, now too are rated at a max temperature of 105 degrees Celsius. Previously, in the past, you'd usually see ones in the region of being able to withstand up to 85 degrees instead. So I would therefore no longer worry about the quality here. Not really surprising is that on the secondary side, capacitors also by the brand Tipo can be spotted. In general, here and there, one will also discover a few by Nippon Chemican. In terms of solid capacitors, I was able to identify ones presumably by brands such as Tipo and Elite, if I'm not entirely mistaken. Unfortunately, I do neither have the know-how nor the required equipment to conduct any meaningful tests with power supplies, meaning that I will have to stick to fairly simple tests only. These do paint a nice picture for the Pure Power 11 FM though. The voltages are fairly stable under different loads and rails and the efficiency turns out just as expected. The PSU delivers almost identical results as other gold rated units, almost down to the watt. So all sounds well and good, but it's time to discuss the ATX 3.0 standard. Today's Be Quiet PSU still sports ATX 2.52, but what exactly is and should ATX 3.0 really be? Many of us will experience a true culture shock with the classic 8-pin PCIe power connector getting dropped. ATX 3.0 will instead make use of a special 16-pin connector. A single one of those should be enough to power all kinds and even the most power-hungry graphics cards out there. But we'll have to differentiate between what or rather how much power can be delivered via that connector by specific PSUs. The connector in question will therefore have to be marked with 150, 300, 450 or even up to insane 600 watts. Furthermore, graphics cards and power supplies are supposed to be able to communicate with each other, so depending on the PSU's output power, the GPU's performance will be adjusted accordingly. Basically, the PSU will be able to tell the graphics card how much power it is allowed to draw. What's also to come, ATX 3.0 units should supposedly operate more efficiently and be able to handle those high, sudden spikes that come with modern graphics cards a lot better. This does mean that modern power supplies will in theory have to offer double their rated output power for a short period of time. That concept sure does sound promising, but there are pros and cons to this. Troubleshooting will become much harder. At the end of the day, all these implementations will lead to PSUs being extremely well built, long lasting and more of a high tech component. But it is to be expected that high costs will make their way down to the consumer. But do not panic just yet, for now we don't even know for sure if ATX 3.0 will even become the new standard. 
Remember, a lot of new standards have been pushed into PC history in the past, but not all of them made their way to the end consumer. So it remains to be seen if ATX 3.0 will hit the market for real in the future. You have to keep in mind, not all manufacturers are on board with that new specification and guidelines. Big changes are always tough. So with that kept in mind, nothing is stopping you from picking up such a traditional PSU we are used to for now. But do we have to spend the extra money on a slightly better unit? Or will such a pure power 11FM serve you just well enough? The vast majority of you, even those enthusiasts among you, should end up being totally fine with this pure power PSU, even in the long term. As far as efficiency is concerned, no longer do any compromises need to be made. It does become obvious that such have been made when it comes to the choice of the OEM, the manufacturer that actually built the unit. Or should I rather say, the choice of capacitors without dragging any of the used components through the mud or anything like that. At the end of the day, at a price of $155 for 1000 watts, a great power supply by Be Quiet in my opinion. Definitely worth recommending. With that being said, I hope you didn't fall asleep listening to me talk about PSUs in this video. Thank you very much for watching and until the next video.